All right, what is up my brothers from another mother? I wanna to talk to you guys today about hair loss remedies. I've seen this trend on YouTube of guys putting out stuff, talking about things like minoxidil, nizoral, finasteride, propecia, which are basically the same thing, and a bunch of other stuff that's all kind of like tied into it. And I've got some experience with that. Obviously I'm in the just own it and shave it camp. Um, so but let's just kind of start with my origin story with that as well, because I've talked about this once or twice before, but I started losing my hair around 21, 22, 23, I think is when I noticed it. Um, I'd take off my helmet after riding my motorcycle and I'd see like more than usual, maybe like half dozen, dozen or so. Um, it's, it's normal to shed some hair, but after a while you start to realizing, okay, well, my grandfather on my mom's side was bald, so guess what? I got the genes. My uh, youngest brother doesn't have it. My middle brother has it as well. So, you know, it's kind of like the luck of the draw for guys. Anyway, so I start to, um, of course, notice my hair is starting to, to fall out. And like everybody else out there, I wanted to try to do something about it to hold on to what was going down. Um, at the time, when I was in my 20s, so I'm in my late 40s now, obviously. But at the time, um, I was looking at options like uh, Nizerol, which was like this reddish shampoo. It's kind of a dandruff shampoo. Um, medically, it was, it was also proven or purportedly to help hold on to your hair follicles. Um, I also use minoxidil and 2% strength and the extra strength as well, which I think was a 5% strength. Um, let me talk about those first. So that's what I started out with. I probably introduced that to my regimen in my mid 20s. I'm going to say 25, 26 or so. Um, I got moderate to uh, abysmal results with it, if I'm being honest. Um, it probably, I mean, it probably gave me a couple of extra years, maybe one, two, three, maybe five max, I would say. Any regrowth that I saw was, um, it's not, it wasn't that thick lion's mane of hair that I used to have when I was a kid. Um, no, nothing even close. It was more finer, softer, almost like the hair on your arms or your legs, um, but nowhere near as dense and definitely finer and less, um, you know, thick, dense looking as your normal hair on your head. So I wasn't you know, particularly stoked with the results, if I'm being honest, but it did seem to slow things down a little bit. Now, uh, let's talk about Propecia and Finasteride, which is really the same thing. I think Propecia is a brand, night, brand name. The Finasteride is like the uh, medical ingredient, if I'm, if I'm getting that right. But either way, it's the same thing. Uh, I never used it, but at the time, in my late 20s, I remember I was dating this girl. She was kind of a plate. Um, and I was, I, I don't know, I was with her for a couple months. And after a while she had revealed she had a boyfriend shocking right I was alpha seed and the boyfriend was the beta need she wasn't banging him and she was telling me that he was on this uh, pill Propecia at the time and he had no sex drive couldn't get it up couldn't keep it up and I was like what the hell like why would you like why would you take something like that in um, you know, like your prime years uh, and not be able to use your tool. It just didn't make any sense to me. Um, and then I asked around to some other friends and stuff and they were like, yeah, dude, stay away from it. There was like one guy I think that said that it didn't affect him. But for the most part, the feedback that I got was the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. Yeah, you might hold on to some hair. What it does is it, um, I think it's called a 5-alpha reductase and it just inhibits DHT, which is a very powerful form of testosterone. Uh, from binding with the hair follicles and making them fall out and all that you know medical stuff happens behind the scenes of course I'm not a doctor let's just set that aside but um, that's that's essentially what it does it has side effects though because what it does is it messes with your DHT um, I'm not sure if it messes with the production or its ability to bind to hair follicles but either way in a lot of guys they end up with um, sexual performance issues or ED or you know uh, they're unable to maintain a erection which is kind of pointless because I mean the whole point of looking good and being a chat and being able to attract women was of course to engage in you know intimacy so I just passed on that. Um, I don't have any personal experience, but that's what I had, you know, experienced myself as the alpha seed at the time and also, you know, with friends and other guys that I talked to. So I kind of use the shampoo and the minoxidil treatment, I'm going to say for about five to 10 years. The results weren't great. I would, I would overall say, guys, at some point, the thing that you have to understand is that, um, by the age of 30, somewhere somewhere around about a third of the male population is already experiencing male paddle 
male pattern baldness. By about their mid 40s, two thirds of the male po population has experienced some form of obvious male pattern baldness. By your 50s, uh, probably about 80 or 90 percent. I don't know what the numbers are like after that, but they're not good. At some point, the vast majority of the male population is going to be, you know, looking closer to this than a guy with a full head of hair. Now, are there other treatments today? Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard about these hats you can put on that laser, you know, zap some shit on your head and, you know, apparently stimulate follicles. Um, there's these rollers you can roll on your skin. I've seen guys buy them for their beards. And what they do is they basically cut little, little micro holes in your skin. And apparently that helps um, uh, bring nutrients into the hair follicles. I've not tried any of those, so I don't don't know if any work so I'm talking more specifically to the things that I have firsthand or even secondhand experience with um, so with that being said again I'm in the just suck it up buttercup and shave your head at some point camp I did that around my early 40s maybe 41 42 uh, I started clipping my head to like a zero maybe by my mid 30s and it was around my early 30s that I was basically using haircuts and styles uh, that would start to hide male pattern baldness. Uh, like the Caesar cut was popular when I was, um, you know, in my 20s and around that age, my late 20s. So it still looked good, reasonably good anyway. So don't, my, see, my view is don't worry about it too much. Um, there's, there's things in your life that you can control. There's things that you can't control. They've got all kinds of new remedies today. I was talking to uh, this clinic that a friend of mine got a, um, it's, it's basically where they tattoo your scalp and they, make, and they make it look like you've got stubble on your head. Uh, I think it's called micropigmentation, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. I was talking to them and they wanted to do the procedure on me and they wanted to basically, you know, sponsor. I was like, ah, you know, I'll think about it. And then COVID hit. So I just, you know, kind of, you know, set it on the back bench because they were out in California. So there are certain things that you can do. I've got a friend that um, did the um, head tattoo and he looks really good. And I've seen one or two other guys do it. So I'm not saying it's off the table, but it's not a huge priority for me. I'm also in touch with uh, Jay Campbell and this experimental peptide that he's using. Um, I, I talked about it maybe about a month or two ago. Uh, um, I'll put the link up on the top right of the screen in a card if you want to check it out. Um, but I've only been using that since about September, October, and I haven't seen an obvious change. So I'm just kind of doing it as a test because I know the peptides are like super safe. But either way, um, at some point, guys, just, you know, you, you take a look around, you're like, okay, there's all these Hollywood actors like the Bruce Willis's of the world and the Rocks and the Vin Diesel's and the Jason Statham's, and they look good. Um, Anytime I've gone to the theaters, you know, with a date and seen a movie, these women always comment on how strong and masculine these guys look with a shaved head. And I just started to realize, you know what, if they can pull it off, I can pull it off too. It's, it's just a matter of, of having the confidence, going and doing it, you know, smashing weights, make sure you got a nice mac, you know, masculine V taper. You want to have, you know, the swimmer's body, not the scrawny kind of endurance runner. You don't want the bodybuilder look, but you have a look and you just kind of own the look and you kind of roll with it. And I don't, I don't have any apprehension about the, you know, today. I know there's probably a time where I was, I was super worried about it and I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? And what are people gonna think of me? And I'm gonna be like, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And, uh, you know, some people will point and sputter and they'll flick boogers at you and they'll call you names. And, you know, I'm a more of a public figure. So I get that from time to time and, you know, my channel, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't phase me. I just look at these, uh, you know, scenarios as like, look, um, these are these are things that are going to happen in your life as you get older as a guy and you age these things will happen there's things that you can delay and put off and there's certain uh, regiments there's certain tools you know from from different toolboxes that you can apply to your life to delay or um, you know delay the aging process or at least um, maximize longevity having hair on your head is not real like there's no there's no uh, connection between uh, longevity, quality of life or health or anything like that. There might be some guys that would argue, well, if you have a full head of hair, you can get laid more. It's like, well, I never have any problems. So I'm not sure why that would be an issue. I think for the most part for guys, it's, it's, it's just getting over that hump in their head that at some point, you know, you're probably gonna lose the hair you got on your head. Go out, chase excellence, make some bank, have a nice masculine V taper, you know, work on yourself have a look, have a style. If you want to grow a beard, you know, kind of like, you know, trim it up that way. There's different ways that you can attack it, but it's a losing battle. It's, it's, you know, for most guys, something that they're not going to win. I know that there's a lot of videos out there dedicated to trying to find ways to win or to make it work out. But, uh, 
you know, you can spend a lot of time, money, effort, resources trying to win a fight that you're basically going to die on a hill at some point and just kind of accept for yourself, all right, you know, do you want to fight this fight or do you kind of want to let it go? And, you know, it's my view, just just pass. Uh, at some point, you're just going to have to get to the point where you're going to resign to it and say, all right, I'm not going to win this one, so let's just grab myself a decent razor and start shaving it. Speaking of which, before I go, two last things. Um, one of the common uh, reservations I hear a lot of guys say is that, well, what if you have a mole on your head or you don't have a good shape head or some, you know, some nonsense like that? Can't do anything about the shape of your head, okay? At the end of the day, that's, that's what you got. Um, work with it. But most heads look aesthetically pleasing when they're clean shaven. Um, if there's moles on your head, I used to have a really big one on the back of my head, kind of like, you know, where like the horseshoe starts to kind of form. And when I started to notice the hair loss, um, I was really self-conscious about it. So I looked up a uh, plastic surgeon that was close to me. Uh, specifically what I would look for is one that works on, um, like women's stuff like that, like, uh, lips, facelifts, uh, breast augmentations, cause they usually have a steady hand and they're good, um, with a nice clean cut and making it look good. So went in there, I think I spent like $350 or something. You cut it out. I was in and out in 20 minutes, hurt like a SOB for about 24 to 36 hours. Uh, but after the stitches healed up, everything was fine and you know, it's, it's, it's smooth as butter back there now. So, um, you can get them removed and they're not very expensive. So, so there's that part. The other thing is when it comes to razors, uh, I connected with, um, what used to be called halftime razors a couple of years ago. Um, we did some sponsored deals together. Uh, I've done some videos. So pinned in the top comment or in the description, or, you know, I'll just, I'll just put a, a, put out a, a pop-up card. Um, he's got a subscription service. I think it's called head shave club now, if I'm not mistaken, but he's got a subscription service. They're great razors they are really good. So what you do is you basically balance them, you know, between your fingers and it's shaving one motion this way. And then again, back this way. So you can check out that video. If that's something that you want to try out. Uh, I'm not doing this to shame anybody that's losing their hair or is choosing to shave their head. All I'm doing is I'm trying to give you some alternative viewpoints on, um, you know, the notion of trying to save the scraps that you're trying to hold on to. There was a really uh, funny episode in Seinfeld at one point um, in, in the very early seasons. And I think it was Elaine. She was poking fun at George and she was like, well, what are you doing? You're holding on to scraps. And that really hit home hard for me because I was at a point in my life where I was like, yeah, I'm just going to shave it off. Jason, you know, Jason Statham looked great at that time. I think it was around the time Lockstock, Two Smoking Barrels came out. Uh, he had a lot more hair back then. I actually had more than he did at the time. That's when I started clipping it short. Uh, five, maybe six years later, I started shaving it. So there you have it. That's what I would recommend. Leave a comment below. Let me know what your approach is. Smash the like button. There's probably somebody that needs to see it. Hey, listen, if you're not subscribed to the channel too, do me a huge solid. Subscribe to the channel. It doesn't take you anything. And smash that like button. That helps out a ton with the algorithms. Uh, go to the pin top comment. There's lots of useful links. If you want to book me for coaching, join my men's community, request a video, uh, links to my new book, all that good stuff. We'll see you guys later. Peace.